Greetings, everyone, and welcome once again to the Baptist Bread and Scripture Song broadcast for this ninth day of September 2024. And this is from the 2017 Baptist Bread. And like I've been saying the last few days and last weeks, uh, that we'd be reading this uh, book here until the new Baptist Bread comes in, and then we'll start in on the new. Uh, Baptist Bread devotional booklet, but right now we're doing the old one from 2017, and praise the Lord that I kept all these old Baptist Bread booklets, because you never know when I was going to need them, and uh, in this case, uh, I needed them to, uh, for this month, and pray for those that are trying to get the ba new Baptist Bread printed and sent out to all those that subscribe to it, and they you know, get it on a um, quick uh, basis, so amen, and we started yesterday on this two-part topic and the one from yesterday was titled the result of sin and today we're continuing on with the topic sin is the issue so if you missed yesterday's i encourage you to go back and watch that in its entirety and so we'll get into the topic here in a few minutes but first i'd like to greet you as always in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ who is the lamb of god which taketh away the sin of the world and he too can be your lord and savior day if he's not already and that is the most important thing you can ever do is trust Jesus, believe on him, and he'll wash away all your sin, give you eternal life. And then the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, comes and dwells inside of you and learn. And then you, um, he'll teach and guide you uh, and as you learn to live for him. And so hope you continue on living for the Lord if you're saved. And if you're lost, uh, come to Jesus and believe on him and he'll wash away your sin and all that. So... And you must uh, realize you're a sinner and you're dead and you're trespassing in sin and nothing else can save your soul. It's only by uh, God's only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. So I hope you trust that on him today. So we're going to start in Isaiah 25, 1 for the scripture song. But let's go ahead and open up this chapter of Isaiah and look at its entirety and get some context here. So we know that the Old Testament is mainly for the nation of Israel, but of course we can learn things from the Old Testament and apply things in spiritual and practical um, uh, ways. So, amen. All right, so Isaiah, uh, what was it, uh, 25, and let's see, Oop, went too far. So chapter 25, there is 21 verses here. So in verse 1, which is the scripture song, uh, it says here, O Lord, thou art my God, I will exalt thee, I will praise thy name, for thou hast done wonderful things, thy counsels of old are faithfulness and truth. That's right. In, the, in chapter uh, 1, verse, or excuse me, chapter 25, verse 2, says, For thou hast made of a city and heap, of a defense city a ruin, a palace of strangers, to be no city, it shall never be built. Therefore shall the strong people glorify thee, the city of the terrible nations shall fear thee, uh, for thou hast been a strength to the poor, a strength to the needy in his distress, a refuge from the storm, a shadow from the heat, when the blast of the terrible one, uh, ones is as a storm against the wall, thou shalt bring down the noise of strangers as the heat in a dry place, even the heat with the shadow of a cloud, uh, the branch of the terrible ones shall be brought low. Verse 6, And in this mountain shall the Lord of hosts make unto all people a feast of fat things, a feast of wines on the lees, and of fat things full of marrow, of wines on the lees well refined. And he will destroy in this mountain uh, the face of the covering cast over all the people, and the veil that is spread over all nations, he will swallow up death in victory, and the Lord will wipe away tears from all off all faces, hallelujah, and the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off all the earth, for the Lord hath spoken it, and it shall be said in that day, Lo, this is our God, we have waited for him, and he will save us, this is the Lord. We have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. For in this mountain shall the hand of the Lord rest, and Moab shall be trodden down under him, even as straw is trodden down for the dunghill, or, yeah, for the dunghill. And he shall 
spread uh, forth his hands in the midst of them, as he that swimmeth spreadeth forth his hands to swim, and he shall bring down their pride together with the spoils of their hands, and the fortress of the high fort of thy walls shall he bring down, lay low, and bring to the ground, even to the dust. Amen. And I said that there was a uh, 21 verses, but I was actually looking at chapter 26 when I said that. So there was only 12 verses in chapter 25. So uh, we've finished that. And now let's go ahead and get into the scripture song for today. Now that we've read the entire of the chapter there. And good chapter and a little bit of a prophecy there. Uh, talking about um, future prophecy that has not happened yet. So amen. So let's go ahead and. Uh, sing the scripture song for today and Isaiah 25 1 O, o Lord thou, thou art my God, my God. I, I will exalt thee I will, I will praise thy name for thou hast done, done wonderful things thy counsels of old are faithfulness and truth O Lord thou art my God I will exalt thee I will praise thy name, praise thy name, I will praise thy name, for thou hast done wonderful things, thy counsels of old are faithfulness and truth. O Lord, thou art my God, I will exalt thee, I will praise thy name, Praise thy name, I will praise thy name, for thou hast done wonderful things. Thy counsels of old are faithfulness and truth. Praise God. All right, so we'll get that back to today's, and we'll do that again towards the end of the broadcast. And now it's time to get into today's topic, and I consider this Part 2 of yesterday's topic, which was titled, again, I read this to you earlier, this is titled, The Result of Sin, that was yesterday, and we went over James 1.15 and actually read the entirety of James 1, so we won't do that again today, but you can go back and read James 1 in its entirety again, and today's topic is titled, Sin is the Issue, which would uh, be Part 2 from yesterday, and James 1.15b is the passage, and we read this before, it says, Sin when it is finished, bringeth forth death. So, that's right, it sure does. So, um, that's that. And then we have uh, the author today. And the author is Brother Randy Pike. So, let me uh, look here. All right, Randy Pike. And he is a missionary statesman from Greenville, South Carolina. So, let me read you what he wrote uh, today from part two of yesterday's topic. And he says here, when the... God and Savior of Holy Scripture has been neutralized, anything is permitted. Gradually, over this land, the Bible has been rejected as a sole basis for spiritual and moral knowledge, right? And that's not good. The University of North Carolina requires courses on the Quran, and public schools in California are required to observe Islamic unholy days. He puts un in parentheses, so uh, is required to observe Islamic unholy days, right? Because uh, we know that that uh, the Quran um, does not speak the truth, and, and of course there is some stuff in there that you can find about Jesus, and of course it um, tells you to refer to the Bible to know the truth about who Jesus is, and he is God manifest in the flesh, and came down to this earth over 2,000 years to die for our sins, and was buried and rose again the third day according to scripture, and so, um, amen. All right. And it continues on here. It says, Meanwhile, the Bible is hated and banned, while prayer in the name of Jesus Christ brings lawsuits. <laughs> and uh, it's probably even worse today than it was when this was written. And it says here, True religion found only in the blessed Son of God has been reduced to a matter of one's personal opinion, not the eternal decrees of almighty god and we know it's not one's personal opinion we know it's the truth 
Amen. So, uh, continuing on here, it says, The Bible is a collection of myths uh, that they say. They say that the Bible is a collection of myths, which you know it's not, subject to the whims and perversions of every demonic new translation spawned by the devil's learned scholars. <laughs> and thousands of seminary graduates do not have a clue what they believe, except they know for sure that the King James Version of the Bible cannot be trusted, but it can be trusted because it is the Word of God. All these modern uh, perversions are garbage, and they take things out of the Bible. And so we're to refer to the King James Bible because that is the Word of God in the English language. Praise the Lord. And yes, God can speak in English, and English is the dominant language today. So, amen. All right. And so it can be trusted. And continuing on, it says, churches have been invaded and conquered by self-help seminars. Uh, the latest success story, <laughs> How to Achieve Wealth, Happiness, Lose Weight, Refurbish Your Image, and a thousand other diversions. What garbage. It sure is. I agree. What garbage. <laughs> the God, God, excuse me. The gospel is no longer the power of God unto salvation, but it sure is. And... Uh, and even to this day, it is the power of God unto salvation, even though they say it's not. Instead, singing six hymns, three choir numbers, four specials, and getting everybody happy is the way to soothe one's troubled mind. Well, of course, there's nothing wrong with singing hymns and all that and having specials, but we can't neglect the preaching and teaching of God's word. So and there's a time for that. And, and uh, so if you're against uh, singing hymns and stuff of like that, well, you shouldn't be because uh, hymns have truth in them too. And so there's special music as long as it's uh, glorifying the Lord and all that. And um, being uh, singing of uh, hymns that match up with the scripture and talk about the Lord and all that. So uh, so there's truth in the, those hymn, hymnals and those hymn songs and that special singing as long as it's not... Uh, Glorifying self and all that. So, all right. So, continuing on, it says, We are surrounded by the wreckage of our biblical compromises. Our quest for freedom has led to bondage and spiritual barrenness. While the Bible is rejected as the supreme book for divine counsel, it is then replaced by human reasoning. With this, hell's gates open and devils rejoice. So, um, let's make sure we don't uh, give in to these things and keep trusting the Bible and uh, amen all right so and make sure we're till, still telling people about Jesus so they don't end up in hellfire and uh, the devils can't rejoice so and of course we know that uh, they're gonna have their day and uh, Lord's gonna cast them out into a lake of fire and then you want to has rejected Jesus as our Lord and Savior. So make sure you trust Jesus today before it's too late. And you don't have to perish in your sin. You trust Jesus Christ and live. And amen. So, all right. That was a good uh, little topic there. Um, that second part uh, from yesterday. So, all right. So that's the end of the Baptist bread topic from 2017. And uh, this uh, particular devotion was on a Saturday back then. So, Amen. And now let's go ahead and grab the Daily Strength Volume 2 book as we are starting this series of topics on praise. And we started yesterday with the introductory stuff. So let's go ahead and read today's topic for Day 219, which is Monday. And it's titled, What is Praise? And we have 2 Samuel 22, 4. It says, I will call on the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. And so let's go ahead and look at 2 Samuel 22 and get some context here. So 2 Samuel 22. All right. Whoops, went too far there. Okay, so 2 Samuel 22. All right, so 22. Let's go here. And chapter 22. Let's see. So this is a lengthy chapter here. So let's see. All right, so we'll make sure that's right. So 2 Samuel 22, 4. And we'll start here in the beginning. And this is uh, here. Um, 
David speaking. So it says here, And David spake unto the Lord the words of this song in the day that the Lord had delivered him out of the hand of all his enemies and out of the hand of Saul. So we're going to need to read the whole entirety of this chapter here because it is a song. So let's see. So and verse 2 says, And he said, The Lord is, that's present tense, The Lord is my rock and my salvation and my deliverer, the God of my rock, in him will I trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my high tower and my refuge, my Savior, thou savest me from violence. Verse 4, I will call on the Lord, excuse me, I will call on the Lord, who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from mine enemies. Uh, when the waves of death compassed me, the floods of ungodly men made me afraid, the sorrows of hell compassed me about, the snares of death prevented me. In my distress I called upon the Lord, and cried to my God, and he did hear my voice out of his temple, and my cry did in enter into his ears. Then the earth shook and trembled, the found foundations of heaven moved and shook, because he was wroth. Then went up a smoke out of his nostrils, and fire out of his mouth devoured. Coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also, and came down, and darkness was under his feet. And he rode upon a cherub, and did fly, and he was seen upon the wings of the wind, and he made darkness pavilions round about him, dark waters and thick clouds of the skies. Through the brightness before him were coals of fire kindled. The Lord thundered from heaven, and the Most High uttered his voice, and he sent out arrows, and scattered them, lightening, and discomfited them. And the channels of the sea appeared. The foundations of the world were discovered at the rebuking of the Lord, at the blast of the breath of his nostrils. He sent from above, he took me, he drew me out of many waters, he delivered me from my strong enemy, and from them that hated me, for they were too strong for me. They prevented me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my stay. He brought me forth also into a large place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands hath he recompensed me. For I have kept the ways of the Lord, and have not wickedly departed from my God. For all of this, for all his judgments were before me, and as for his statutes, I did not depart from them. I was also upright from him, or excuse me, I was also upright before him, and have kept myself from mine iniquity. Therefore the Lord hath recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to my cleanness in his eyesight, with the merciful thou wilt shew thyself merciful, and with the upright man thou wilt shew thyself upright, with the pure thou wilt shew, th shew thyself pure, and with the froward thou wilt shew thyself uh, unsavory, and the afflicted people thou sh uh, wilt save, but thine eyes are upon the haughty, that thou mayest bring them down, for thou art my lamp, O Lord, and the Lord will lighten my darkness. For by thee I have run through a troop. By my God have I leaped over a wall. <laughs> I like that verse there. <laughs> so let's read that again. For by thy, excuse me, for by thee I have run through a troop. And by, or by my God have I leaped over a wall. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all them that trust in him. Hallelujah. For who is God save the Lord, and who is a rock save our God? God is my strength and power, and he maketh my way perfect. He maketh my feet like hinds feet, and setteth them setteth me upon my high my high places. He teacheth my hands to war, so that a bow of steel is broken by mine arms. Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation, and thy gentleness hath made me great. Thou hast enlarged my steps under me, so that my feet did not slip. I have pursued my enemies, and destroyed them, and turned not again until I had consumed them. And I have consumed them, and wounded them, 
that they could not arise, yea, they are, are fallen under my feet, for thou hast girded me with strength to battle them that rose up against me, hast thou subdued under me, thou hast also given me the necks of mine enemies, that I might destroy them that hate me. They looked, but there was none to save, even unto the Lord, but he answered them not. Then did I beat them as small as the dust of the earth. I did stamp them as the mire of the street, and did spread them abroad. Thou also hast delivered me from the strivings of my people. Thou hast kept me to be head of the heathen, a people, uh, excuse me, a people which I knew not shall uh, serve me. Strangers shall submit themselves unto me. As soon as they hear, they shall be obedient unto me. Strangers shall fade away, and they shall be afraid out of their close places. The Lord liveth, and blessed be my rock, and exalted by the God of the rock of my salvation. It is God that avengeth me, and that bringeth down the people under me, and that bringeth me forth from mine enemies. Thou also hast lifted me up on high above them that rose up against me. Thou hast delivered me from the violent man. Thou, excuse me, therefore I will give thanks unto thee, O Lord, among the heathen, and I will sing praises unto thy name. He is the tower of salvation for his king, and sheweth mercy to his anointed, unto David, and to his seed forevermore. Hallelujah. So that's the entirety of chapter 22. So, lengthy chapter there, but it needs to be read in its entirety. So now let's go ahead and get into the topic now. For today, uh, day 219, Monday, titled, What is Praise? And again, Second Samuel 22, 4 says, I will call on the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. And this is from the book, Daily Strength, by Brother Stauffer and Brother Ray. And introductory thoughts say this, Most Christians have an incorrect concept of the meaning of the word praise. Perhaps one reason but this is the fact that some believers have labeled many charismatic tendencies as praise in order to justify their behavior. Historically, the word was understood to have a connection to value or worth. Even today, people understand this connection when considering the word appraisal. In fact, many verses that deal with praise also include some statement of the Lord's worth. 2 Samuel 22, 4 says, I will call on the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. One must declare the worth of the object of praise in order to praise someone or something. If an action fails to declare the personal value of a person or thing, it cannot rightly be considered praise. Hmm. So, that's a good introductory uh, thought there. So, introductory thoughts. So, let's think on these things here. And devotional thoughts for children, it says, Praising God is expressing to him that we know he is perfect, holy, good, great, etc. It is also thanking him for something he's done. Some examples are Moses, Exodus 15, 1, 6, and 11, from the same chapter. And then Hannah, 1 Samuel 2, 1-3. And then Solomon, 1 Kings 8, 22-24. So that's for children there, and of course we can learn these things uh, from this uh, for children as adults also. So now for, uh, for everyone, it says, what are some actions that could be considered praise unto the Lord? How do these things declare the Lord's worth or value to you personally? What does this, excuse me, what does it say about your appreciation for the Lord if you fail to praise him? Why should he be of great work to you? Uh, when is the last time you praised him? Hmm. So good questions there for the devotional thoughts. And now for prayer thoughts, it says, take some time to praise the Lord in prayer and then ask God to help you to be more aware of your praise for him. Amen. And then the hymn for today from the book is titled, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. And that's the second hymn. So let's go ahead and go and Put that aside and grab the hymn book here. And let's see here. I gotta 
move some of this stuff around here. So let's do this. All right, put that up there for right now. And we'll turn this on, put that there. Grab the hymn book. All right, so this first hymn, I could not find an instrumental to it. So this is another one of these missions hymns. And this is hymn 859 in the book titled Come Over and Help Us. And this is a spiritual song written by Sarah B. Judson, who lived from 1803 to 1845, and then anonymous, and then arranged by William Hauser, H-A-U-S-E-R, 1812 to 1880. And so I wonder if this uh, uh, Sarah B. Judson, I think, I wonder if she was um, married to Adoniram Judson. So we'll find out in the story here at the bottom. All right, so there's six stanzas here, so I'll read you all six stanzas, stanzas and then we'll read the um, story here at the bottom. So it says here in verse 1, or stanza 1, I should say, uh, Ye, on whom the glorious gospel shines with beams serenely bright, pity the deluded nations wrapped in shades of dismal night, ye whose bosoms glow with rapture at the precious hopes they bear, Ye who know a Savior's mercy, listen to our earnest prayer. Stanza 2. See that race deluded, blinded, bending at yon horrid shrine. Madness pictured in their faces, emblems of the frantic mind. They have never heard of Jesus, never to the eternal prayed. Paths of death and woe, their treading Christian, Christian, Come and aid, stanza three, by that rending a shriek of horror is issuing from the flaming pile, by the bursts of mirth that follow by that Brahman's fiend-like smile, by the infant's piercing cry, drowned in gauge's rolling wave, by the mother's tearful eye, friends, of Jesus come and save. Stanza four, by that pilgrim, weak and hoary, wandering far from friends and home, vainly seeking endless glory at the false Mohammed's tomb, by the that blind, derided nation, murderers of the Son of God, Christians grant us our petition, ere we lie beneath the sod. Stanza five, by the Afri's hopes so wretched, which at death's approach shall fly, by the scalding tears that trickle from the slave's wild sunken eye, by the terrors of that judgment which shall fix our final doom, listen to our cry so earnest, friends of Jesus, come, O oh come, stanza six, by thy martyr, by the martyrs' toils and sufferings, by their patience, zeal, and love, by the promise of the mighty bending from his throne above, by the last command so precious is issued by the risen God, Christians, Christians, come and help us ere we lie beneath the sod. Well, so that's uh, quite a hymn there. Too bad there's not an instrumental for this one. And now the story at the bottom of the page. It says here, uh, Sarah Boardman Judson, the second Mrs. Judson, was a member of the First Baptist Church in Salem, Massachusetts. The heart for mission work among this congregation affected the young convert of 17. And having married George Boardman, she departed at... Uh, age 21 for Calcutta, six years later, having witnessed the death of three children in infancy and her precious uh, husband, Sarah continued her labors for three additional years. In 1834, she married Dr. Judson and joined in the work for 11 uh, years before her own frailty gave way and the faithful lady died on a ship returning home while harbored in St. Helena, Adoniram Judson noted, There I saw her safely deposited, and in the language of prayer, which we had 
often presented together at the throne of grace, I blessed God that her body had attained the repose of the grave, and her spirit the repose of paradise. Mm. So that's uh, was his second wife there. So, and I encourage you to read about Adoniram Judson if you've never read about him before. And uh, I just read this really lengthy book that was written by one of his sons. Uh, there was a um, autobiography about uh, Adoniram Judson and and uh, and all that. So it was, I finished it about a month ago. So really good book there. So, but I'm sure there's probably less lengthier books about him that you can read. So, amen. All right, so that was the hymn there by uh, Sarah B. Judson. And now the reference is here. We have stanza 1 is 2 Corinthians 4, 6, Ephesians 5, 8, 1 Peter 1, 3, and then Titus 3, 5. Stanza 2, we have 2 Corinthians 4, 4, and Romans 10, 14, and then Proverbs 14, 12. And then stanza 3, we have... Um, what is that? L E. What is that for? L E. I can't. Um, uh, what is L E? 18. I don't know what L E is. I'm trying to think of all the L um, books here. So there's um, there's Lamentation, but I know it's not Lamentation. So let's see. Lamentation. Um, all right, well, I don't know what that reference is. It's LE1821, so if you know what the initials for LE is, I'm sure you can find it there. So LE1821, uh, I'm not sure that, maybe it was a typo. Um, 2 Peter 2.1, and then Exodus 1.22, and then that's it for stanza 3 there. And stanza 4, we have Colossians 2.8, and Acts 7.52, and then Acts 16.9, and then uh, stanza 5, we have Proverbs 10.28, and then Revelation 20.15, and then stanza 6, we have 1 Corinthians 15.58, and then Acts 1.8, and that's it for the references there. So, <clears throat> all right, so that's uh, the end of the first hymn there and now we're going to go back all the way towards the beginning of the book and we're going to sing this hymn and this was hymn 24 all the way from the beginning of the this hymn book here and this is titled joyful joyful we adore thee and this is one of these praise unto god hymns and hymn and this is uh by henry van dyke who lived from 1852 to 1933 and then ludwig ludwig von beethoven 1770 and 1827 from the hymnal 1911 and there is no story for this one so let me press play and we'll sing along with the instrumental all right so Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts sung full like flowers before thee, praising thee, their sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the dark of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. All thy works with joy surround thee, earth and heaven reflect thy rays. Stars and angels sing around thee, center of unbroken praise. Field and forest, vale and mountain, blooming meadow, flashing sea, chanting bird and flowering fount, flowing fountain, call us to rejoice in thee. Thou art giving and forgiving, ever blessing, ever blessed. Wellspring of the joy of living, ocean depth of happy rest. 
Thou our Father, Christ our Brother, all who live in love are thine. Teach us how to love each other, lift us to the joy divine. Mortals, join the mighty chorus with the morning stars began. Father, love is reigning o'er us, brother, love binds man to man. Ever singing, march we onward, victors in the midst of strife. Joyful music lifts us sunward in the triumph song of life. Amen. So that was the hymn there yeah, for this one second hymn. And like I said, there's no story for this one. So let me give you the references and then we'll move back on to the scripture song again. We'll maybe do that one a couple more times. So we're only going to do that one today. <clears throat> And so, let's see, stanza 1, we have Psalm 511, Psalm 91, and then Psalm 21.6, stanza 2, we have Psalm 145.10, Psalm 148.2-3, Psalm 148.9, and then Psalm 148.10, stanza 3, we have uh, Micah 7.18, Psalm 16.11, First uh, John 4, 7, and then First Thessalonians 4, 9, and then stanza 4, we have Job 38, 7, Hebrews 2, 11, and then Romans 8, 37. So that's the end of the first hymn there. I mean the second hymn, sorry, second hymn. So now let's go back here and put this to tomorrow's hymn there, and we'll put that aside for right now, and then let's go ahead and grab the scripture song again. Or the scripture song book, I should say. All right, so we're going to do only this one today from uh, Isaiah 25 1. So here we go. Let's press play and sing along again with Brother Dean and Sister Patty. Isaiah 25 1. O, o Lord, Lord, thou art my God. God. I will exalt thee. I will praise thy name. For thou hast done the wonderful things. Thy counsels of old are faithfulness and truth. O Lord, thou art my God, I will exalt thee. I will praise thy name, praise thy name. I will praise thy name, for thou hast done wonderful things. Thy counsels of old are faithfulness and truth. O oh Lord, Thou art my God, I will exalt Thee. I will praise Thy name, praise Thy name. I will praise Thy name, for Thou hast done wonderful things. Thy counsels of old are faithfulness and truth. Praise the Lord. All right, so we'll just do that one time more. And uh, so that'll be it for today's broadcast. But before I go, let me give you tomorrow's scripture song and then the topics for the Baptist Bread and the Daily Strength Volume 2 books and then the hymns for tomorrow. So tomorrow will be the 10th and we'll be singing John chapter 20 verses 30 and 31 and then 21 25 and it says here and many other signs truly did jesus in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book but these are written that ye might believe that jesus is the christ the son of god and that believing ye might have life through his name and then uh, 21 25 says and there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. So those are the passages from our for the scripture song. And so that's that. And then the Baptist bread from 2017. The topic for tomorrow will be titled, 
a cure for haughtiness and this is for september 10 and uh that was from 2017 so that'll be the topic tomorrow and then genesis 32 verses 24 and 31 so we'll uh, look at that uh, entire chapter there and tomorrow's author is km i believe that's the initials for ken mccomas if i remember correctly so yep ken mccomas from uh, dalton uh, georgia so he's the author for tomorrow on a cure for haughtiness and uh, today's um, topic for the 9th of september was on a saturday back then and tomorrow's uh, topic um, for the 10th was on a sunday back then so that's uh, the cover of the book there and i'll show it to you again uh, there that's the cover there of the book and then the daily strength volume 2 book we're continuing on this topic of praise and tomorrow is uh, tuesday day 220 titled the praise of others and we have proverbs 31 28 through uh, 31 so that's the passages for tomorrow and then the hymn for tomorrow is titled take my life and let it be and that's a pretty good one there so that's the second hymn for tomorrow and then the first hymn that we'll be singing is titled hark what cry arrests my ear and this is hymn 860 Another one of these admission hymns, spiritual song written by Amos Sutton, and then Frederick, Frederick uh, F Filtz, that's F-I-L-I-T-Z, Filtz, and then um, there is a story for this one too, so amen. So I'll read that story to you um, after we sing the hymn. Hopefully there's an instrumental for this first one here. If not, we do have an instrumental for the second one, I know for sure. So that's the cover of the hymn book, the one I've been using lately. The dark blue uh, cover there and then there's also a lighter bluish uh, grayish uh, cover there uh, for the hymn book and then a brown uh, cover for the um, original ones there and then you also have the leather bound edition and then this one that's got the um, side backing here which we replace the regular side backing with this spinal side backing so that's uh, we replace this type of side backing here and so that's different ver ver versions of the book uh, the hymn book there and then the daily strength volume two book there's four volumes to this series of books and you can find all these books online at um, melodypublications.com is the website there so that's uh for uh that uh, those books there and then the scripture song book and cds you can get those online at www.dailyscripturesongs.com that's brother dean and sister patty runyon's website missionaries to port kaituma guyana and you can pray for them uh, they're not on the mission field anymore they had to come off the mission field because of brother dean's health so I'm looking for another pastor there to take over that work in guyana so uh, but right now there's brothers and sisters that have taken over that work over there for the time being so pray pray that they can find a good pastor there i know they've asked brother blake muscat to go over there and be the pastor so pray that he has a big decision to make and i know that he won't uh or hope i hope he wouldn't leave that uh, boat or not boat ministry <laughs> he said in the book don't ever call it boats and <laughs> their ships so that ship uh, men ministry hope he doesn't uh leave that behind and they can find somebody to take over the work and then he can get the guy on there if that's where his heart is and the door is open that or the lord's open that door for him again so pray to that end and all that so that's um how you can get the scripture song book and cds and then the baptist bread book this is the front one from 20 17 and uh, so that's the one i've been using uh, for right now until the new one comes in and so again the topic for tomorrow is a cure for haughtiness and that's from that book and if you order now you'll get the one uh, for uh, this month and next month and the 2024 and that's baptistbread.com or www.timgreenministries.org and that second website has other books available to order if you check out that website there and then the Bible, the King James Bible, the Word of God. This is the first book we need to be getting into and reading it and studying it and showing thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, and then going to God in prayer and seeking his face and having a good solid relationship with the Lord and all that and getting into a good Bible-believing church and under good preaching and teaching from God's Word and, and around the brethren and sisterin that will help you and guide you um, and all that and, and keep you on the right path also so amen all right and then the other book that i've been reading 
uh, through in se separate broadcasts that I've been pre-recording. And this is the Book of Genesis, part of the Christ Honoring Commentary series, written by Brother James. And this is a devotional type of uh, commentary. And we've come to this ninth day of September, and it's titled Notes on Genesis 37, Part 1. So today is Part 1, and tomorrow will be Part 2. And then on this, the 11th, we have a company of Ishmaelites. That's the topic for the 11th. And then on the 12th, we have the coat of many colors. And we'll go over that topic on the 12th. So that's uh, some topics to look forward to in the next few days. So and you can get the PDF file for this book online at www.jameswnox.org. Or go straight to the store part of the website, which is store.jameswnox.org. And and look up this book, the, the PDF file format, and then this book will be available hopefully one day in a chapter-by-chapter, chapter, verse by verse commentary when it gets re-released. So, and then there's other books that you can get on the website there, and then there's preaching and teaching from God's Word from Brother James and other men that teach and preach the Bible during the Sunday school hour, and then times when Brother James is uh, um, away preaching or uh, just away on vacation or whatever's going on. And so, Amen. All right, and then if you want to watch the video presentation of the um, preaching and teaching from God's Word, you um, can do so on the church um, YouTube channel, which is James Knox Sermons YouTube channel. And then if you want to watch these on uh, the broadcast that I do, uh, you can go on to the YouTube channel, and that's Ambassador for Christ Broadcasting, or typing in Baptist Bread Broadcast, and look me up that way, and like and subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you know when I'm Posting these up on the YouTube channel there. And uh, so, amen. And that's about it for today. So thanks for watching. And may the Lord rich richly bless you until next time. Bye-bye for now.